Jordan Love and the Packers were playing host to Jared Goff and the Lions. It was billed as an NFC North rhubarb. And you knew it was big because Al Michaels was there. And in my world, because I'm old, when I grew up, every big game, Al Michaels was there just about. So when Al Michaels is there, it means something to me. So I was watching. I was watching on the Amazon. I don't know if you watched it. Maybe not. But David Montgomery, he's a running back. He also vaporized the Green Bay defense. He tuned them for 121 yards and three touchdowns. And Detroit manhandled the Packers 34-17 to at Lambeau Field. And the Lions, don't tell anybody, but the Lions are 3-1. and one, And the Packers dropped to a very mediocre 2-2. Two and two. But the better story here is clearly on the side of the losers in that losing locker room. You know how we work in these parts, so let us discuss. The question for this Thursday night game for Green Bay, who gets the biggest scoop of the blame cheese curds? Not the blame pie. Don't confuse this with the blame pie. This is the blame cheese curds. I've got VHS tape, hollow earth, and cyclone. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a headache, which the head coach of the Green Bay football team likely has right now, a headache based on his commentary at halftime and postgame. So, A, we're going to start by throwing a pile of blame cheese curds right there, right at the foot of Matt LaFleur. Now, I'm a believer that coaches in the NFL are mostly responsible for game prep and cultivating the culture, right? creating the winning environment that your team's ready to show up and play, and they're ready for a dogfight every game. And you might not win them all, you won't win them all, but you're going to compete, right? You're going you're gonna to fight to the end. The Packer team that showed up in this game, and I got no skin in the game, okay? I'm not a Packer fan, I'm not a Lions fan. But the Packer players showed up not ready for a dogfight, they were ready for a slumber party. And for the second consecutive week, the Packers were not ready at the start of the game. The entire team played like they were in a medically induced coma for the first 30 minutes. And unlike the game against the Saints, where they were able to come from behind, this time they couldn't. And if you didn't see the game against Detroit, how bad was it on Thursday night? The Lions had a 27-3 lead at halftime. They had 15 first downs in the first half. Green Bay had three, but really only one. Really only one they earned. Two of them came via infractions by the Lions, via penalty in the first half. The Packers had more sacks and more punts than points at halftime. And the stat totals, it was like an early season college football game when you play one of those checkbook games where you bring in the little sisters of the, the blind and poor and you play them and then you beat them up and you write a nice fat check and then you get all your numbers. Lions had 284 yards of offense and Green Bay had 24. That is a plus 260 in yardage, my computer-like brain tells me. You know what this reminded me of? I'm, I'm going to go old school here. This reminded me of, in my childhood, a VHS tape of super-duper football follies, watching the Green Bay Packers attempt to tackle, attempt to block. It reminded me of a football follies video. And so I don't want to be reactionary, but the question must be asked. Coach Matt LaFleur, he's got some explaining to do. Has he been exposed here as a coaching fraud? And if you look at the GPS... And I'm not going to completely bury the Packers, but they are heading the wrong direction at a rapid rate of speed. And you look at that division, the Bears are are hopeless and helpless. The Vikings haven't won a game. They've given games away. And the Lions, if they continue on the path they're on, the Packers continue on the path they're on, the Lions could win this division by five games, the way things are looking in this moment. All right, now turning the page here, let's zoom in. On the Packers quarterback. Why? We love quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are more important people. And what is your read? Here's the question. What's your read on Jordan Love? So here's my read. It's it's the tale of two halves. 
And it depends. Are you a glass is half full person or a glass is empty? Now, being a talk show host, I believe the glass is not only empty, it's completely cracked and there's no hope. But in this game, Jordan Love commandeered the Vomit Comet. He did in that first half. He repurposed the, the old John Wayne quote, the famous quote, which I think was probably bogus, but it's a great quote that's been repeated. It's part of the, the history books that reports of Jordan Love's ascent up the quarterback rankings have been grossly exaggerated. When the contest was undecided in the first half, Jordan Love completed less than 50% of his passes for less than four yards, was sacked four times, and had a quarterback rating of below 25. Would have been better off just taking every snap and you know, spiking it in the ground. Would have had a higher quarterback rating. Now, the usual lap dogs, the uh, people that love to give shoulder massages to quarterbacks, it's not his fault, blame the offensive line. Well, you knew going in the Packer offensive line was tattered. So you would assume the position that you would adjust if you're Jordan Love, make quicker decisions, get rid of the ball, protect your offensive line. He didn't do that. Uh, And then in garbage time, when the game was already decided at halftime, he went hollow earth. In the second half, Jordan Love completed almost 75% of his passes. He averaged uh, eight and a half yards per pass over that. In the second half, had a touchdown, beautiful quarterback rating of over 100. And those are what's known as hollow numbers. Junk stats when the games don't matter. As the old sportscaster Marv Albert would say, that was extended garbage time. Now, Al Michaels tried to sell that the Packers were back in the game. But you've got to be a real rube to think that the Packers were actually back in the game in the second half. They were not. All right, last word here. From the Detroit side of things, the winning locker room, which is not as good a story, how is the wide angle, right? not the the zoom, the wide angle lens looking for Dan Campbell's Lions? So as Larry David would say, pretty good, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Even with going on cruise control in the second half, that third quarter where they were the ones that looked like they had been drugged. Regardless of that, Dan Campbell has a squad here. And these are not your daddy's Motor City kitties. They have been swept away by a cyclone of goodness. It's just like the Wizard of Oz. But unlike the Wizard of Oz, the cowardly lion has found courage. They've got firepower. And there's a few flashbang stun grenades in that locker room. Matt Laporta, the tight end has been mana from heaven, and Amon St. Brown, a smooth operator, David Montgomery running like a rhino, running over defenders. Now, Jared Goff still makes me queasy, but that's part of my neurosis from watching him play with the Rams. But he has proven to be at least a functional quarterback, which is not the kindest thing you can say about a quarterback, but but he's adequate, which is also not a kind thing to say about a quarterback. But there are worse. You could have Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or uh, you know any of these other turds that are playing quarterback around the NFL on the bottom teams. But he's smack dab in the middle of the bell curve. Jared Goff, and on defense, there's a few guys there led by Aiden Hutchinson, who's a rock star on defense. They've got the ingredients for a delicious cake. Right? And everything's falling into place right now. It's still early, and uh, it could end up being completely torn apart by injury. And they've already had a few injuries. Everyone does. That's how it works. And you look ahead here, and it's the hostess schedule the next two weeks. You got the tomato can, Carolina. You got the cupcake uh, there, Tampa Bay. Uh, they were exposed by Philadelphia. So things are really good. I mean, this is like a total thumbs up for Dan Campbell right now and the Detroit Lions. And finally, when they play on Thanksgiving, we won't have to make the same jokes we always make every year. Well, well it's the only time we see the Lions, man. Why do they put the Lions on there? They suck. Uh, it's going to be different this year. It's gonna be, it's, that's a big deal. It's going to be a big deal watching the Lions because they're actually good. And they're a playoff team. Now, are they as good as the 49ers and the Eagles? Uh, no. But all it takes is for them on that single day, if they play Philly or the 49ers on the playoffs, that they're better that day, and then uh, there you go. They're on their way.